Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. The movie Top Gun Maverick has done very well in the theaters. The film starts with Tom Cruise's character flying a hypersonic aircraft. This airplane is called Dark Star. The name may not have been chosen at random, for there was indeed a concept built and tested. But instead of Dark Star, it was called Black Star, and today we'll learn as much about it as we can. In the movie, this plane is able to take off like a normal jet and fly to Mach 3.5 using turbojet engines. Rocket engines are much older than turbojets. Rockets flew in ancient China over a thousand years ago. But it took the development of efficient high-powered turbines to advance the science of rocket engines. These turbines came from jet engine development. Turbojets have an inlet here. The air comes through this area called a compressor, where it is compressed and slowed, after which it enters this area. This is called the combustion chamber. Here fuel is added and burned. Then the heated high-speed air exits through the exhaust. Jet engines come in several types. For efficient flight below the speed of sound, we use a turbofan. This type of engine has a large forward fan that moves a large volume of air, much of which bypasses the compressor. Because jet aircraft don't have to carry oxidizer, they are amazingly efficient. Here you can see a potential 8,000 seconds of specific impulse. This would be the most amazing rocket ever created. Jets don't have to carry their oxidizer with them, but rockets do. In a rocket, pure oxidizer is fed into the combustion chamber, either by pressure or a pump, combined with the fuel and then burned. There have been several companies who try to combine an air-breathing first stage with a pure rocket second stage. The problem is that traveling horizontal, we have an endless air supply. Traveling straight up, the air gets too thin to work in a jet engine at only 37 kilometers the altitude record for jet engine flight, which was set in 1977 by Alexander Fedotov in a MiG-25M. The official speed record for an air-breathing craft is 3,530 kilometers per hour, which is 2,190 miles per hour, or about Mach 3.5, and was set in 1976 by Eldon Joris and George Morgan in an SR-71 Blackbird, though unofficially. SR-71 pilot Brian Schuel claimed to have exceeded Mach 3.5 in 1986 while avoiding a surface-to-air missile launched to intercept him. In a jet, air, a combination of mainly nitrogen and oxygen, is fed into here and burned with the fuel. The exhaust can then be fed into a converging-diverging nozzle to reach supersonic speeds. In jets, just like many rockets, that fuel is usually a form of kerosene. Liquid hydrogen would be more energetic, and it can be used much more effectively to cool parts of the rocket or jet, but liquid hydrogen is not very dense, and your airplane would need to be huge. So this jet must be flying with a denser propellant than hydrogen, perhaps kerosene or even methane, though we don't see any cryogenic venting. So let's assume it's using good old RP-1 kerosene or some other similar jet fuel. As the jet reaches Mach 3.5, the ability of the compressor blades to compress and move air fast enough is exceeded. At this speed, it becomes necessary to use a different form of propulsion. Ramjets were invented long ago for this purpose. A ramjet is almost a reverse rocket engine. Whereas a rocket engine has subsonic airflow in the combustion chamber, Mach 1 airflow through the throat, and supersonic airflow out the nozzle, the air enters a ramjet at supersonic speeds and is slowed by the shock waves generated by this cone to subsonic speeds. At these speeds, the flame holder here can combust the fuel injected up here. The combustion heats and expands the air and it moves out of the exhaust at supersonic speeds. The problem with ramjets is that at very high supersonic speeds, the air is heated so much by compression that the heat in the combustion chamber is not a big enough change to increase thrust by very much. 
In the movie, you see the plane switch over to a scramjet. A scramjet is a type of air-breathing engine. Scramjet stands for supersonic combustion ramjet, and it can only work at supersonic speeds. At this speed, the air compresses itself as it comes through this narrowed section. Just as the air channel starts to expand out again, fuel is injected into the airflow and ignited. So the air comes in supersonic and stays supersonic. Let's review. Fan jets, subsonic in and subsonic out, usually flying at about Mach 0.5 to 0.8. Turbojet, subsonic in and supersonic out to start, able to fly at supersonic speeds up to about Mach 3.5. Ramjet, supersonic in, slowed to subsonic for combustion, then back up to supersonic. Scramjet, supersonic all the way, in, combustion, and out. The geometry of the scramjet engine is designed to keep the airflow above Mach 1 at all times. The main problem here is maintaining ignition. Researchers liken it to trying to keep a candle lit in a hurricane. Scramjets work best at or above Mach 5, though it can act like a ramjet at lower speeds. That means something must get it up to supersonic speeds before it can work. Adding turbofans or turbojets to a hypersonic airplane with a scramjet adds mass. And there's also a cooling problem. The compression of supersonic air generates a lot of heat. This heat can be transferred to the fuel in a process called active cooling, which increases the efficiency of the engine, but increases the mass of the ship. This is the Rockwell X-30, also called the National Aerospace Plane. This was supposed to be a single stage to orbit vehicle. Design started in 1986 by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, and development continued into the 1990s. This ship would fly up to Mach 8, at which point it would start to generate a lot of heat, up to 1,650 Celsius. McDonnell Douglas used titanium matrix composites in the test vehicles, one of which is seen here. These test devices withstood temperatures of 820 Celsius with no problem before cancellation of the program. The ship was designed to use cryogenic hydrogen fuel to absorb the heat and send it through the engine, thus increasing the overall efficiency of the ship. And a speed of Mach 20 seemed possible. The unique shape of the front of the ship created a shock wave that compressed the air before it reached the engine. The rear of the fuselage created an integrated nozzle where the exhaust could expand and propel the ship at hypersonic speeds. The ship would have been 49 meters long and 22.5 meters wide, and it would have had a gross mass of about 136 tons. This ship was canceled, but we can see a mock-up on display in Huntsville, Alabama. The United States went on to test a scaled-down model called the X-43. This was tested by NASA in 2004. Supposedly, this was the end of that program. Though something flying at hypersonic velocity kept setting off the earthquake detectors in California. This may have been the hypersonic SR-72. But a decade before the X-43, another plane was flying. On the 4th of October in 1998, this airplane was spotted flying near Salt Lake City, Utah. This is the supersonic XB-70 Valkyrie. The X designation means that it was experimental. Had it continued development, it would have become the B-70 nuclear-armed supersonic strategic bomber. This airplane had six General Electric turbojet engines, placed in a uniquely designed engine pod on the bottom of the craft. These burned JP-6 jet fuel. The aircraft had a delta wing and canards in front. And it used compression lift, creating a shock wave with the plane's leading edge, compressing the air before intake by the engine. It could cruise at Mach 3 and reach an altitude of 21 kilometers, and was made from honeycomb titanium alloys and designed to fly high enough and fast enough to outrun any missile system of its time. It was an amazing machine, and the question is, what was it carrying back in 1998? The smaller craft attached to the belly of the plane was described as a highly swept wing vehicle. Rumors reported in the magazine Aviation Week suggested that it was a completely private contracted spacecraft, funded with national security shielded resources. This seems to have been the Black Star space bomber. 
The Black Star was a hypersonic space plane, meant to be launched from international airspace and fly itself into low Earth orbit. From there, it would carry out its mission, reconnaissance or nuclear weapons deployment, then fly back to a friendly airfield and land. The existence of this two-stage to orbit space plane was denied by U.S. Space Command back in 2006, when the Aviation Week article was published. In fact, the concept was called a technical absurdity in an article published in Space Daily. Despite this denial, we know the Soviets flew this space plane, the MiG-105 back in the 1970s. Taking off from a runway under its own power, it was test flown at least eight times, and one is on display in Russia today. As to the American Black Star project, we know there was a classified project related to these designs under the code name Science Dawn, and a patent search reveals this. This is a delta-winged supersonic jet called the SR-3, which would have taken over after the XB-70 was canceled. It would carry this. This was called the XOV or Experimental Orbital Vehicle, also known as Black Star. Instead of a single bank of engines, like the XB-70, the SR-3 had two separate banks to allow room in between to suspend the Black Star. The Black Star had linear aerospike engines, developed from the canceled Lockheed Martin X-33. It was to be dropped from above 30 kilometers because at this altitude, the air density is only 0.0184 kilograms per cubic meter. Air density at sea level is considered 1.125 kilograms per cubic meter. That means the air has lost 98% of its density when the second stage is deployed. The decision to deploy the second stage from the bottom of the ship may be from the experience of a modified SR-71 called the M-21. It is sometimes optimal for the carrier craft to climb during deployment. And while the M-21 was deploying the D-21 supersonic drone, the drone bounced off the upper shockwave and crashed back into the M-21 destroying the airplane and killing one of the pilots. The Black Star would have been deployed from the bottom of the SR-3, as you can see here in the patent drawings. Whether this ship actually flew is debated, but what we do know is that the United States tested ships capable of single-stage to orbit and two-stage to orbit. According to a declassified report by the RAND Corporation, two of three tested vehicles failed to achieve orbit, but the third, called an assisted single stage, made it to a stable orbit. Many companies are looking again at this concept, as high temperature alloys are perfected and the space industry grows. We may someday see something like this fly. XCOR Aerospace was a very innovative small rocket company. XCOR helped build the first private rocket-powered airplane, the Easy Rocket, which flew in 2001 and it helped United Launch Alliance build new Hydrolox engines for an upper stage. x also built and tested methane rocket engines in 2005. These were planned to be used with the Orion spacecraft for lunar return. Then they designed the x Lynx. Lynx. The Lynx was planned to be a horizontal launch space plane. It would carry one pilot and one paying passenger, along with a satellite payload of up to 140 kilograms. It could launch from a regular airport runway, greatly expanding launch operations. It would have four liquid propellant rocket engines, burning RP-1 and liquid oxygen. This engine was the XR-5K-18 and used a unique expander cycle piston pump with an RP-1 cooled nozzle. Amazingly, x was able to cool an aluminum nozzle with RP-1. The body was made from carbon cyanate with an Inconel nose and leading edges. The Lynx completed wind tunnel and engine testing, and x applied for funding through NASA's Suborbital Reusable Launch Vehicle Program. The first flight was planned to be from the Mojave Spaceport in 2015, but funding was not secured, and the flight was delayed until 2016. The Lynx had been designed to fly four or more times a day, and could complete 40 flights before any maintenance was required. By May of 2016, it was clear that no funding was coming and x started laying off staff. By 2017, x had closed and filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Single-stage and two-stage space planes are still a viable concept for some applications. 
The Virgin Galactic Spaceship 3 may be flying soon, but it needs a large carrier aircraft and is not planned to make it into orbit. It would have been an awesome experience to get into a rocket plane on a runway, fly into space, deploy a satellite, and land safely back on the same runway. Maybe someday we'll see a new black star make it all the way into orbit. We'll do a full video on the Sabre engine Skylon concept soon. Thanks for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and help us out on Patreon if you can. We appreciate you. At Astro Proterra.